the new urban agenda should be an agenda that creates policies that are beneficial to the people. The people that are poor, the people that are homeless, the informal network people, the informal economic people. What we want to see happening, all the civil societies, post Quito, we should go back to our member states, our different governments, hold them accountable because during the first habitat and the second habitat, communities and civil societies were sidelined. The decisions were, was between the member states. Local government was, was not considered as an important entity. I think this constituency is a very important tool that will make sure that the member states, what they agree upon, happens on the ground. The new urban agenda, I don't know what happened with the old urban agenda, but with the new urban agenda, it talks about sustainable development goals. But the good question is, who is the goalkeeper on these goals? The communities are the goalkeepers. There's something that is missing strongly on the new urban agenda, community-driven data collection. My organization in South Africa called FedUp, through the data collection that we did, we were able to convince several cities when it comes to informal settlement upgrading. There's a very strong partnership that is happening in Uganda right now. Government has agreed to support our federation in Uganda with the setting up of the city fund. The city fund that will help communities to develop their It is because of the data that we have collected. For me as the grassroots representative, I don't care about the language. I care about the content. I care about how we are going to implement development directly to the communities. Language in the new urban agenda can confuse somebody and the other one can understand. But the implementation of development, sustainable development to our communities is a very vital and important issue. And that's what I'm going to fight for after Quito.